I stole two iPod touches in a span of a two weeks from the same person. When I was around 12 years old, I was in morning home room and talking to my classmate. He told me that he had just gotten the iPod Touch 4th gen, and he let me play with it as we talked about how cool it was. A couple days pass and we re in gym class and I noticed my classmate slipped the iPod into his backpack and didn't he put it in his locker. So I make a quick 90 and head to the bathroom. I hang back a little bit, exercise my born given right to wash my hands for 20 seconds. And I make my way over to his backpack, slide the zipper open just enough, and secure the artifact. I carry on with my day and don't show any signs of my misdeeds. So in my middle school we had another homeroom right before dismissal for attendance purposes. And my classmate tells me that he lost his iPod, and I pretended to be sympathetic to his loss. But I scoped out the state of the situation by asking him if he had any idea where he last saw it. He had no clue, so in that exact moment I knew I had a new iPod. About a week and a half goes by and my classmate, in homeroom, tells, and shows, me that he got the iPod replaced. And this time he got the white edition of it. I had to have it. I don't know why I felt compelled, maybe it was the sheer audacity of it, or maybe it was the thrill of stealing something I didn't even need. I rinsed and repeated my last method, and he didn't he have a single clue. He never got another iPod touch, but I am not sure if that is a good or bad thing for either party. But yeah that is my story of what I did, and I can say that I haven't utilized the 5 finger discount in a very long time. Recovery has been long and tedious, perhaps even strenuous, but I can vouch that there is a way. P.S. This is a very true story with slight exaggerations for self-projection. My friend freshman year of high school took my nano iPod. The one that was a square and it was dope. I had the bomb of my favorite music and used it for football because it got me through the day. For about a week I couldn't find it anywhere. He never listened to music casually and he started wearing headphones a lot. One day I realized how weird it was that he never changed the songs around me. My gut told me to see if he had it. I asked him what he was listening to and I forgot who he said. I asked him if I could see his device and see what music he had and he was like nah I just have random music and I asked why I called not and he called not give me a straight answer. The raised a huge red flag and I forced the headphones out of his backpack and boom. There was my little silver iPod. I literally slapped him as soon as I saw it. He tried to explain and said he was only gonna borrow it for a few weeks and give it back. I defriended him so quick and never talked to him again. He would try and dap me up everyone once in a while but I'd ignore him. It is real fucked up to do that. You never know what's on the device or if they would ever be able to afford another. There was this girl at my elementary school who hated me, it was a small school and I was the new girl that year, grade 7. Everyone was pretty close because they all lived close and there were 200 kids total in the whole school. About 3 months after I got there she accused me of stealing her iPod touch and told everyone. The teacher, the principal and her parents. My mom was extremely strict with me so I never stole as a child, there was no way I'd be able to hide it from her so I never even tried. The fact this girl accused me of stealing something so valuable really got to me cause all I could think was like there is no way I could get away with that but again I was the new girl so everyone believed her. A week and half after I stopped being questioned about it and the entire class hated me she started bringing the exact same iPod to school again with the exact same case. She told everyone that her parents bought her a new one but I think she just lost it and blamed me because I was new and she didn't he like me, or she just lied and blamed me for same reason. It took so long to get over that because I felt like nobody trusted me, the reason I switched schools in grade 7 was because I was so badly bullied at my last school. This made me think of that. Some moms seriously embarrass themselves with some of the things they all fight on behalf of their kids for. When I was in high school I told my mom that I had found out a girl I used to be friends with was pregnant and had an abortion. I was mentioning this because the girl was dating an ex-BD of mine and he would have been the baby daddy. Turns out my younger brother overheard this and ended up talking to her younger brother about it. Yikes. 
Anyways, her mom ends up reaching out to my parents saying that I was spreading lies about her daughter and that we all needed to meet. I actually had to go over to their place, promise to never speak about her daughter ever again and sign a document stating that I abided by these rules. It was the dumbest shit ever considering I wasn't the one spreading this information and not even a year later, her daughter drops out of school because she is pregnant again and was advised not to have another abortion because she had apparently already had to. I remember back in 2010 when I just turned 15 my brother bought me the brand new iPod at the time, the one with the most gigs, too. I've had it for about two weeks and used it before football practice and would leave it in my varsity locker. One day after practice I saw that my locker was cracked open with my iPod and phone stolen. The fact that it was most definitely one of my teammates who stole it didn't hurt nearly as much as realizing how much money I just made my family lose over my stupid mistake. I've had wallets and other phones stolen before, but this cut me really deep because these were birthday gifts. Anyways, I had no proof but I felt like it was one certain teammate who has a reputation for being thuggish. I figured if I made a fuss about it he'd have his cronies gang up on me for accussing him. That was my biggest regret, not doing anything about it. I told my head coach about it and he said something along the lines of, it's not my problem, you shouldn't bring valuables to school which he's right, but it was a fucking teammate, somebody who I should be close with, something you preach so hard about. Stick together like brothers you'll never find anyone else like each other, well I guess he was of right in that aspect. After we talked I could barely walk home because I was so ashamed and scared about my family's reaction that I spent a couple hours crying in a ditch before going home. Being called irresponsible and ungrateful hurts so much more when you didn't mean to. Needless to say I quit the day after, I'm not going to be a part of a group I can't even trust. The final slap in the face was when my coach knocked on my door at 5.30 in the morning a couple days later trying so hard to convince me to come back that I just got sick of it. Slammed the door on his face and went back to bed. Sorry for the long and shitty rant, you unlocked a memory I tried burying deep in my mind, maybe it's good to let it out. Also, sorry if for shitty format I'm on mobile. When I was a kid my dad moved to America for a few years. Because it was so far away, living in the Uck, and not being from a particularly rich family, I generally only got to see him once a year when he would either make a trip home or pay for us to come out to see him. Usually I went in the summer, but one year I went for Christmas. I was super excited because American Christmas looked amazing in all the movies like Home Alone and it didn't disappoint. Back home having Christmas lights on your house was seen as a bit tacky, people would look down on the people that did as being common, so it was a bit rare to see a lit up house. Imagine then my delight when every street on the block was lit up like a Christmas tree. The whole month I spent there was awesome. However the peak came on Christmas morning. As all kids of the 90s, I was obsessed with Pokemon. I had played Pokemon Red on my original Game Boy so much, I could still hear the music in my head when I went to sleep. There was a bunch of presents under the tree but my dad picked one out specifically and gave it to me. I still remember he had a bit of a grin on his face. I opened it up and inside was a Game Boy Color and a copy of Pokemon Silver. The reason this was so exciting is because the game was released in North America about 6 months before Europe, so I was literally the first kid in my time to get a copy of Pokemon Silver slash Gold. I was ecstatic and so happy, I played it solid for the remaining weeks I was there. This whole experience was quite a big deal for me because my dad was significantly richer than my mom back home, so such expensive gifts were rare and even though my mom did amazingly well for me and my brother, it felt extra special to get these presents. I remember on the journey back home I was so scared of losing it I basically clutched it in my hand through the whole journey. It was my new prized possession. When school started again, I proudly took my copy of Pokemon Silver in to show everyone. I only took it in the one store because I was so scared of losing it. Now at my school, this wasn't like an American school where there were rows of lockers. We had a cloakroom to put our stuff in, of which our personal space comprised of a hook to hang our backpack. Not the most secure thing ever, but being a naive kid I never thought twice about it. 
A few months later, everyone else gets their copy of silver or gold so I start bringing mine into school again to play with everyone else. Despite most other kids having the game, mine was an American copy with the EA for Everyone logo on it which automatically made mine the coolest. You can probably guess where this is going, one day it came to lunch break and I rushed to the cloakroom to get Pokemon to play. I opened up the same pocket I always kept it in and it wasn't there. I panicked, this was my worst nightmare coming to fruition, I could swear I remembered putting it in the pocket, I turned my whole backpack inside out but it was gone. I bawled my eyes out. I thought I'd lost it. The teachers at school launched an investigation to help me find it, but my friends all said they remember me putting the game in my backpack. I still remember being so shocked that someone would have stolen it. Naive, I guess. I was heartbroken and it still twists my guts to think about it to this day. So I was like 10 and Bratz dolls were the shit. And I got one for my birthday. My parents are not bit spenders and we weren't rich or anything so this was pretty special. I went to school on my birthday and we were asked to sit in a circle and I got invited to talk about my presents. So I tell about my amazing new Bratz doll. Well this boy wanted to play with me at my house that afternoon. So I said yes and we played and it was fun. When he left my Bratz doll disappeared. So naturally my mom and dad asked me to search my whole room but I came to the conclusion it must have been this bow. I bawled my eyes out and asked him to return it. He denied at first but after a few times asking and crying he returns it. The hair was all messed up and the face was drawn on with a black marker. He fucked up my doll in just a few days. I still don't know why, I was able to revive her a bit but my parents were fuming. I don't know if they have talked to him afterwards or anything. But I do know that he has a big collection of dolls and I think I wasn't his first victim. I got into one hell of a mess in high school when my iPod got stolen when I was a junior. I was on the basketball team and it was just two weeks before the season started so we had practice every day. I had this friend, Jennifer, who asked me a couple of times if she could borrow my iPod while I went to training slash practice with the team which I absolutely minded but it was hard for me to ever say no back then. Looking back, I'm not so sure why she always hung around after school. She wasn't in a club, sport or anything. One day though, after practice I asked for my iPod back. Jennifer didn't have it. When I asked what happened, she claimed that a mutual friend, Cindy, asked if she could listen to it for a bit. Jennifer told her she could but to give it right back after one song but suddenly, Cindy's mom came to pick her up and she ran out the door with it. I told my mom, she got the cops involved. And Cindy didn't have it but was forced to pay the money it cost. So many kids at school knew about it but because my mom was involved, it caused a lot of negativity, especially between me and Cindy. Some said that Cindy gave my iPod to a friend's cousin who ended up selling it for cash. I'll never know the truth what happened to it but it was something I'll never forget or forgive and I still hold a small grudge over it. Somehow I stayed friends with Jennifer for the rest of high school but the trust was totally lost. Cindy and I had major rift between us and my friends never took my side which made me feel betrayed, especially because it was never talked about. <laughs>